I went on three fishing trips over the course of three days looking for native trout in the Appalachian Mountains. I explored three different areas and fish creeks I had never even laid my eyes on. The goal was not only to locate some cool areas, but to hopefully show you all how I find new water to fish. This was day one. So I just wanted to show you this real quick. Literally just got it in my car right here. And as you can see behind me, we've got this beautiful little creek. Now, I think theoretically, and I'll show this on the map, I think this literally comes out of the side of the mountain. Like I think this is a spring fed creek or the head of this is spring fed. There's three stems to the top of this creek. This one's spring fed. And I think the other two are also spring fed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a place to pull over up here and I'm gonna run up here and see if it's spring fed. I'm gonna bring my rod with me and if there's any good pockets, I'm gonna cast at it. All right guys, so if my maps are correct. This creek should just hit this mountain and come out of the side of this mountain. And I'm hoping it does because that will also essentially prove that this creek not only has temperature regulation, but also never really runs out of water. Like this creek has some beautiful gravel. So I would think the fish would spawn in here if nothing else. Although, having said that, there's not really any holes yet. And without holes, it's kind of hard to catch fish. Especially this time of year. It doesn't necessarily inspire confidence. Look how pretty this is with the sun coming down through the trees. But it's confirmed this is a spring. Obviously, we got this entire creek coming out here. and just comes out of the side of this mountain. If you look here, See this water's running underneath this tree and it is gorgeous in here. I mean, look at the green moss on these trees. We got a little hatch popping off. Haven't seen any fish, but a lot of times, I mean, as you can see, this is really skinny water. There's not really any holes here. And a lot of times these fish don't even make it up here or they might come up here and spawn. So there might be like a bunch of young in the year fish in here. There's a little hole there that might hold a fish. There's a brook trout in there. There's a brook trout in there. No way. Let's see if I'll eat again. It was a good brook trout too. It was like an eight inch long fish, six to eight incher. Hold on. I thought we could maybe catch this fish. I assume it was a brook trout. I don't actually know that it was. Dude, dang it, man. I think that was a brook trout, but I can't really confirm. We might try to come back there and catch that fish at some point. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we have confirmed, whoa, it's kind of soft here. We've confirmed that this is a spring, which is massive. That means like I can almost guarantee you that um there's brook trout in here matter of fact i'm pretty sure that fish i saw in that tiny little hole there that was half underneath the ground was a brook trout only because i really doubt there's a creek chub that big up in here i might even try to come back and catch that fish because that's an incredibly unique place for a fish to be so i told there's three forks of this creek all of them i believe are spring fed and if this one's actually spring fed then i'm sure the other ones are and the crazy part about this creek is that it's not even, um, there's not even a name on it. It's a literal, just a blue line, which is why we call it blue lining because there's, oh my gosh, almost just died. But it's because a lot of these creeks don't even have names. They're just blue lines on a map, which makes fishing them even more incredible because someone will be like, where'd you catch that fish? And you're like, I don't know, a blue line. So anyway, let's go actually confirm that there's fish in here before I get too excited. All right guys, there's my car. I was just driving along the road here because I knew that the one of the forks to this creek had another spring that I should have been able to theoretically see from the road based on what I saw on Google Earth. So I drove out here and boy, if there isn't another spring that's at least the size of the one that I just showed you guys on that last little uh, finger of this creek. Now mind you, this creek is so small, it doesn't even have a name, 
but there's at least two pretty major springs feeding it. And what does that mean? That means we're in brook trout heaven, boys. This pretty well shows off a spring in that obviously the water isn't coming from anywhere, but straight out of the side of the mountain. And once again, all that means is that this temperature is gonna be regulated year round. It's never gonna get too warm. And it probably means this creek always has water in it. So those are like all the ingredients you need to catch trout in areas where there's a good amount of trout that is. So yeah, I'm gonna make sure there's not some hole up in here that's gonna enable me to catch some fish like the last one had, but it doesn't look like it. This one I might actually be able to see inside the cave here. Let's look at this for a second. I might actually be able to say, see inside this one. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, guys, so see in there? That's where the water comes from. So this is what this stuff looks like. This is a karst feature. So this is like limestone, dolomite, something of that nature. And this basically regulates the pH, it regulates water temperature. And as I said, it means that there's probably always water coming out of here. Based on this little trail, I'd say there's some little animal in here too. You know what I wonder? I wonder if there's not a fish inside this cave. Yeah. Oh my God, there was. There was a fish in the cave. No way. I couldn't set the hook because our rod tip is sitting in the cave. And a fish, I saw a trout come up and eat my fly in the cave. I, honest to God, guys, I've never had that happen to me. Hold on, let me cast back in there and see if something happens again or not. I've never had a fish actually eat in a cave. So I wasn't even sure how to react. I lost him again. Dude, I can't cast. Okay, new idea. I'm just gonna literally reel this up to the rod tip and dap it in the water. I see him, I saw the fish. All right guys, I'm gonna leave the fish alone. After about the third or fourth time I lost it, uh, it kind of disappeared, shocker. Um, I'm gonna come back and try to catch these fish again. I'm gonna try to catch the one at the head of the spring on that other little fork of this creek. And I'm gonna try to catch this one in this cave but I just want to come up here and kind of show you this cave real quick because I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see on the GoPro. So this is the opening to the cave here. And it's really cool in here. If you step in here, and hopefully this thing kind of changes, deal with the lack of light. But you can see there's a fork kind of over here. But the main creek goes way up in there, which you guys can't see it. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head down and try to fish where these two forks that I found here come together and just prove that there's brook trout in here to make sure that these weren't chubs or something. I'm 99% sure they were trout, but just to ensure that I'm not going crazy, we'll run way down here, catch some trout as before it gets dark here this afternoon, and then I'll come back and try to catch some fish out of these caves, which I think is probably the most unique slash coolest thing. I've found blue lining in a really, really long time, so I'm gonna stop talking and get out of here. All right, guys, so I just wanted to show you this. This is the fork with the cave where I was messing with that fish in the cave. This is the fork that leads up to the first spring that I found where I kind of saw that fish that came out from underneath the rock. So this is where these two combine and then they go down into this hollow. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to hike down this a couple hundred yards and fish up and hopefully catch a fish out of these creeks. At least that's my plan. There's a fish. Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's a fish immediately hits a tree. It actually ate my dry fly. I don't know what is up with me today, but I've gone like zero for a lot on fish. It's not boating well for my proof of fish being in here. I think I can catch that one if I really put some effort into it. It's gotta actually, got him. Got him, got him, got him. Brook trout, let's go. So there's the proof. 
I knew I was probably seeing brook trout up there, but this proves it right here. So this is just a little itty bitty fella, but that is a native brook trout. Caught him out of this pool. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was just like, I bet I can catch a fish in that hole as I was walking down. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to get down to the water with this guy. <sighs> Only my second fish out of this creek. Not a giant fish, but another just perfect looking brookie. Look at that thing. Caught him out of that hole there. Could release him right here. That was awesome. All right, so I only caught two fish. To be honest with you, I'm not super impressed with this creek from the standpoint of there's not a whole lot of holes. It's a lot of runs. There's good gravel, like good spawning gravel. So just based on kind of the cover in this creek, I would guess that it gets pretty low in the summer. And I would also bet that this is probably kind of a spawning tributary in that I would assume that in the fall, a lot of fish come up here to spawn because there's lots of little tiny brookies in here. And since it's kind of spring fed, I would assume there would be some bigger fish, but there just isn't. Having said that, it's not all bad because basically what this confirms is that there are indeed brook trout in here. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave because it's getting dark. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna try to catch those two brook trout that are sitting up at the heads of those springs. The one brook trout that's kind of sitting in a hole and then the one brook trout that's in the cave. I'm gonna try to catch those fish kind of for my own interest. Uh, just because I want to catch a fish in some unique areas like that. And then I'm going to trib hop. So I'm going to hop from one blue line to the next or one tributary to the next and see if the next tributary over doesn't have a few more fish in it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out of here before it gets dark because I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do the next time I come in here. Although day one didn't see many fish hit the net, I had a good feeling about day two. I decided to stay in the same drainage but explore a slightly larger creek in hopes of finding some larger trout. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so I tried this morning to catch that fish out of the cave and that fish out of the hole. Didn't catch them. It's not over yet. I'm going to try to catch those fish at some point. It was kind of cool this morning. But basically what I've done today is I've hopped one tributary over. and. This tributary should theoretically still have the same spring supporting it that um, the tributary with the cave and the hole had. So it's the same like karst layer of rock that runs across this ridge here. And from the maps, once again, it looks like there should be a couple springs very heavily supporting this tributary. So I'm gonna walk up it a little ways because the bottom end of this kind of looks sandy. So I'm gonna kind of keep pushing up and hopefully find some spring heads again today and take a look at them and see if I can't find something as unique, if not more unique than I did a couple days ago when I was up here. So let's see what we can do. That is shocking. I truly. Oh, 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 oh. What is that? Oh my gosh, it's a brook trout. It's a baby brook trout. No. Wait, there's brook trout in here. That was a young of the year brook trout, guys. That was like a, a dinker brook trout. I mean, an inch long maybe, which means there's brook trout up here spawning. Man, I was beginning to think, I'm not gonna lie guys, I probably worked up at least a mile or so of this stream and I was beginning to think that there wasn't any trout in here. I haven't spooked anything. There's bugs on the surface, no rises, no nothing. And I came up to this big hole and I had a fish eat and it was a little baby young of the year brook trout. So they're in here. Fish exist. I repeat, fish do exist. I was thinking about turning around and trying a different creek. But now I know that there's reprodu reproducing brook trout in here, which pretty much. Yes, as I said, that's like my green light. I'm going to keep going. It's a good sign. I'm going to keep going. Hallelujah. Well, guys, I am miles up this tributary now. 
Now, I haven't seen another fish. Obviously, there's brook trout in here because I hooked that one young of the year, so they come up in here at least to spawn. I just haven't seen many fish. I just can't imagine that there's a very high population in here because this is a pretty good day for brook trout, even though it's only like the very beginning of March. I mean, there's hatches popping off and everything. I haven't seen a single fish rise. I haven't spooked a fish. I haven't seen it, anything. Um, and this is kind of the part of the game that you guys don't really see is kind of all the miles and the hours that are put in behind the scenes on a lot of these videos. And then when I finally catch a big fish, it's like, yay, wow, that's awesome. But there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of work that's put in behind the scenes, that's for sure. So anyway, I'm going to start hiking out of here. I'm going to shed a layer and just kind of like almost run it and get out of here as quickly as possible because I have one more trip I could try that's kind of on my way out if I have time. So we'll see. If I don't have time, then you'll see me on another day this week because it's supposed to be pretty warm for the next two days. So it's possible that I could come out after work and try another one of these tributaries if I really wanted to. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to get the heck out of here. I figured after my embarrassingly slow day two that it couldn't really get any worse. I knew I could only go up from there. So on day three, I set my focus on a tributary in the same drainage, but with some tough access. Sometimes the worse the access, the better the fishing. At least that's what I was hoping would be the case. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the third day out here blue lining. Another stream that I've never been to in my life. I just got here. It's a little bit bigger than what I thought it was gonna be, but it's beautiful. And I did see one person track coming up the bottom end of this creek, which is not an ideal situation because I wouldn't expect if any I wouldn't have expected anybody to be in here. But it also means that there's probably fish in here because there's probably not another good reason for someone to be coming up this hollow. So I'm gonna get fishing. I'm not gonna talk much because I don't have a ton of time because I had to run out after work rather than having like a full day on a weekend. So let's see if we can't confirm the existence of some native brookies back in here or whatever's back in here. I really don't honestly care. Let's do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, whoa, chill out. We have confirmed the existence of native rookies in this tributary. Look at that little guy. Not the biggest fish on earth, but he's a gorgeous little fella, isn't he? I'm gonna go ahead and get him released real quick and then we'll keep fishing up. Alright guys, so here's my big old brookie. Whoa, chill out buddy. He's a very healthy, maybe 10 inch fish, I'd say. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. A very silvery brookie, but a gorgeous fish. I mean, he's a, just a perfect little brookie right there. As I said, he's probably a 10 inch fish. He actually was sitting underneath this log here and it took me a bunch of casts to get him to eat. He kept coming up and denying my drop line and then he finally ate my nymph right below a big waterfall. I mean, that is just an unbelievably gorgeous brook trout. So I'm gonna get him released and keep fishing. Got me another one, another really good fish. Not quite as big as that last one, but he's probably an eight inch fish or so. If you'd let me hold him up here, relax. Look at that fish. That one's got a little bit more color to him. Gorgeous fish. Waterfall is the backdrop. 
Whoa, well, he's gone. I caught this one right over here in this pocket. I bet there's gonna be one up here too, but we'll see. like a salmon looking brook trout. Like look at this, it's a male. Chill out. This fish is very highly likely to get out. Look at his, look at his kite. Like you can tell it's a male because it's got that real long pointed jaw. Look at that thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to hold him up. This fish might be like 11, 12 inches. It's just a long male. Look at that fish. Is that not just a really long, wild looking brook trout? It's an incredible fish. I'm gonna go ahead and get him released and then we'll keep fishing up through here. All right guys, so I just wanted to quickly go over kind of what I'm using, or my small stream kind of blue lining rod. So essentially I have a three weight. This is an eight foot six three weight. Uh, you can go smaller like a seven six three weight, but I like a little bit more length so I can make longer casts. And in a lot of the streams around here that I fish, as you can see, for the most part, they're open. We have some rhododendron, but a lot of these streams are pretty open, so I need to be able to make the long cast of some spooky fish. Um, my line is a Cortland three-weight ultralight line. Uh, I tried a bunch of fly lines, and I like this Cortland ultralight personally because it's a little bit thinner diameter fly line, and it lands on the water a little bit more lightly. Now, on today's like today, it doesn't really matter, but on days when the fish are spooky in the middle of summer and there's low water, I think it does make a, at least a little bit of a difference. So that's the line I'm using. And then I'm just running a nine foot, just regular nylon Cortland leader with a dry dropper. The top fly is a foam elk hair caddis. And then the bottom fly is a little, I'm not even sure what it's called, but a lot of these just nondescript nymphs, like pheasant tails and anything like that will work. I don't think the nymph really matters as long as you're getting it down in front of their face. The same thing with the dry fly. Are there any caddis popping off right now? No, but I've had two of the biggest fish have eaten the dry fly. So, as I said, I don't think it matters. If the fish are in here and they're active, which they are today, because it's really, really warm. It's like almost 70 degrees, which is why I'm wet wading and have short sleeve shirt on. I think that it doesn't really matter what flies we throw. So, anyway, that's what I'm using. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about what's my, you know, small stream setup. And that's just about it. So, anyway. I'm going to try to catch one more fish before I head out of here. It's coming up on 5 o'clock, and that's kind of my cutoff, because I'll probably have about an hour to hike out of here, give or take. So, yeah, let's see what we can do. fish got out of the net, or I would have shown it to you, it wasn't very big. It was not very big, but hey, I'm not gonna complain when I'm catching fish, to be honest with you. So. One of the most liked comments in one of my recent videos was asking how I blue lined and how I decided if a creek was worth fishing or not. So I hope this answered some questions. I also hope that it shows a little bit of why I get so excited when I catch these little brook trout. I think sometimes I make it look like every single creek is loaded with these fish, but often that's not the case. It's pretty normal to hit multiple creeks in search of a stream that is actually worth fishing. So when I finally do catch a 10 inch native brook trout, I may do a fist bump in celebration. As always, thanks for watching.